Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Jake and thank you for joining me on Exploit Academy. In this episode, we're going to look at exploiting the remote code execution vulnerability found in Unreal IRC version 3.2.8.1. This was a remote code execution vulnerability found back in November 2009 and lasted all the way until June 2010, which is honestly very impressive. The vulnerability allowed any attacker to execute arbitrary commands by sending the string a b followed by whatever payload they wanted the command would run as whatever the irc daemon was running as as well so if the irc daemon was running as root then the attacker would have root privileges so we're going to look at how to exploit this manually using a python script and then we're also going to look at using the metasploy script as well so without further ado let's get started All right, so I'm inside of VMware. I have two tabs open. One is for Metasportable 2, which is our target machine running in the background and Kali Linux as our host machine. So for the manual exploitation method, we will be using this Python script here by a Ranger 11 Danger. <laughs> um, I will put the link to this GitHub repository in the YouTube description so you guys can just click that and go to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this URL and then we're gonna open up a terminal and I'm going to CD into my desktop first, so I can download it there. So I'm gonna type in git clone and then control shift B for that URL to download that file. All right, so if we type in LS, you'll see we have a new folder. So I'm gonna change directories into that folder, type LS, and then there we go. You can see we have our exploit and our readme. So like any exploit you download, you always wanna go through the source code because you want to make sure that a the the script is safe and two you want to make sure that there's nothing that you may have to modify to make it work so i'm going to open uh the script inside a mouse pad and let's look at what we have here so i'm going to scroll through these comments um okay so on line 13, it says sets the local IP and port, and it says change this for both of them. So we need to change the local IP and the local port to listen on. So uh, like every remote code execution vulnerability, you're going to have to create a netcat listener to accept this connection back. So this local IP is the Kali Linux IP that we have, and then the local port is whatever we're going to set for the netcat listener. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see here in a second. But first, I'm going to pull out my Kali Linux IP here real quick. So my IP is 10.0.0.60. So back on the script where it says local IP, I'm going to type in 10.0.0.0.60. So this is the IP that this script will use to connect back to, which is us. And then for the port, I'm just going to use anything. I'm just going to use 4444. 4, 4. And then I believe that is all we need for the script. So I'm going to press Control S, save that script, and close out of that. All right. So our uh, Metasploitable 2 IP address is... Oh, I got to log in first. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Uh, MSF admin msf admin if i can type all right ip a our metasportable address is 10.0.0.86 all right so to use the script let's just let's just run it without any arguments first see what it says okay so the usage is exploit.py attack payload, and then we get to select from three different payloads, the target IP and the target port. Well, I didn't show you guys this yet, but Unreal IRC runs on port 6667, I believe. So if we type in nmap, attack SV, 10.0.0.86, which is the metasploitable uh, IP address, you'll see that Unreal IRC is running on port 6667. So wait for this finish real quick. 
All right, so let's see right here. Six, 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 seven, Unreal IRC. Okay, perfect. So we know that is our target port. All right, cool. So I'm gonna type in Python three exploit.py tag payload, and we're gonna use, let's try Python. It's pretty safe. And then the Metasploit YP address 10.0.0.86. And then the target port, which is 6667, because that's what it's running on. Now, before you launch this, I'm going to open up a, another terminal by right clicking and selecting split terminal horizontally. Of course, that messes up my, <laughs> my entire zoom I had going on here. So let me adjust that. Okay. So we're going to create a netcat listener to accept the connection back. So that is NC tack LVP on port 4444. Remember we're using port 4444 because that is the target port that we put in the script. So that is the port it's gonna connect back to when that script runs. So go ahead and launch the netcat listener. All right, and then go ahead and launch our script. Boom, and there we go. So we have a root shell inside of Metasploitable. So if I type in uname, Okay, you can see that we are metasploitable. This is our kernel version and we are running as root. All right, so moving on to the metasploit example. So of course, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, launch metasploit. So that's MSF console and wait for that to load. All right, so now we can, I'm actually gonna zoom out a little bit cause I think it'll kind of scrunch it up on the screen. All right, so once inside of Metasploit, you're going to want to search for Unreal IRC. So type in search Unreal IRC and press enter. All right, so it gives us one exploit. It is the Unreal IRC backdoor command execution. So we're going to use that. We're going to type in use zero to select that module. Okay, so now that we have the module selected, I'm going to type in show options. And you can see we have two options. So that's the R host and the R port. So it already set the R port for us because that's the default uh, port for the Unreal IRC, which is 6667. So we just need to set the R host, which is the Metasploit YP address. So I'm gonna type in set R host 10.0.0.0.86. And I'm gonna type in show options again, just to make sure it's set and it did. All right, so now the next step is to select our payload. So to do that, we're gonna type in show payloads. And this will show us all of the available payloads that we have for our exploit. So out of all these uh, payloads here, I'm going to select number five, which is the CMD Unix reverse shell. So I'm gonna type in set payload five, and that will select that for us as well, as you can see here. So now I'm gonna type in show options again, and we need to set the local host. This is for our payload. So I'm gonna type in set L host to 10.0.0.0.60, which is the Kali Linux IP address I'm on right now. Show options again, just make sure everything looks correct. Our host, Metasportable's IP address, L host, our IP address, looks good, looks good. All right, so now we are just going to run this exploit by typing run. Let it work its magic. And there we go, command shell session one opened. And if I type in uname tag A, we are Linux Metasploitable. And if I do who am I, we are root. So that is the Metasploit example. All right guys, so obviously it's a super easy exploit. However, in this next clip, I want to show you how the exploit actually works. So that way, if you are pursuing something like the OSCP, uh, you would have a little bit more of an understanding of how this vulnerability is actually being exploited. So in this next clip, I'm going to open up that script we just downloaded inside a mouse pad, and we're going to have a closer look at it. All right, so I got our exploit script open in mouse pad here, and I'm going to go over kind of how the script actually works. So if we scroll down, there's a couple things I want to look at. The main section we want to focus on for now is this section right here. Okay. So I'm actually just going to space this apart so it's easy to see. All right. 
So the first thing it does, and remember we had to change this ourselves when we use this exploit. Uh, we had to change the local IP variable here to match our IP address, right? So we did that. And then we had to change the local port to what port we wanted the exploit to connect back to, right? So that's local IP and local port. Okay, so it uses these variables here inside of these payloads. So you can see in these curly braces, we have local IP and local port. So that plugs in the values we have here. So for example, for this netcat payload, it would take local IP and plug in what we have up there, which is 10.0.0.0.60. And then for the local port, it would obviously plug in 4444 because that's what we have for local port, right? So this is the netcat command that's actually launching on the target machine. So you can remember that, and when you scroll down, I'm actually gonna copy this real quick because I'm gonna show you the actual full command it's running on the target machine. So if I scroll down a little bit, um, you can see here in this part, if we selected the payload netcat, right, as our payload type, it would send this string to the target computer. So let me just take out this payload, which is what I have, you know, copy to my clipboard here. So this is the netcat payload. This is actually what it's fully sending to the target machine. So AB semicolon. And remember, AB actually activates that back door. So there's a back door planted on that Unreal IRC version. And that's what we are taking advantage of. So you're calling the back door with AB and a semicolon. And then you are launching this netcat command here to create a reverse shell back to our Kali Linux box. So again, AB activates the back door, followed by netcat, tag E for execute, execute bash, and then connect back to our Kali box on port 4444. So that makes sense because that's why we had a netcat listener waiting for connection back to 4444. And this is basically the same principle with, you know, the Python payload as well as the uh, bash payload. Just Slightly different syntax, right? So that's it. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video today. If you found this video useful, please comment below, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.